gotta get some water in because whoo gotta get prepared for this chat i just want to talk to y'all today yeah so my relationship <sighs> hey friends welcome back to my channel are y'all ready for some girl talk? Because we got a lot to talk about. So today I have a content day and while I'm getting my hair and face ready, I just want to chat with y'all. There's so much that I feel like I want to share. By the time y'all are watching this, you would have known that I recently turned 28 last week. So I just feel like in my 26th and 27th year of life, I have done some massive self growth. There's so much that I have learned that I just really want to talk about. Also shout out to everybody who submitted a question via IG story as well. So not only am I talking about things that I want to share but I am going to open up to you guys about some things that you guys are curious about as well we have a lot to cover and I'm literally like I said I'm just gonna be chit-chatting with my girls right. today so starting off like y'all really wanted to know if I was ever gonna color my hair again um you know what I never say no I feel like at some point in the future I probably will again um right now I'm just doing toner to keep it like a dark more vivid version of my natural hair color so yeah never say never um but right now I am really loving the vibe of my dark natural hair I also feel like my curls are flourishing as well so yeah that's basically the vibe I'm on right now um but yeah I never say never because I wouldn't be too scared to color again, honestly. I'd probably just keep it short. I don't think, like if my goal was ever to make my hair long and keep it long, I'm not gonna color it because that is a whole hot mess express. But I do feel like my short hair would be able to manage color just fine. So we'll see in the future. But for now, I'm good with the dark. I also, you guys may be excited to know that right now I don't have any additional plans to like chop again and go a lot shorter. I feel like y'all always wanna fight me every time I cut my hair. Uh, this most recent cut that I did with these bangs and this, this afro vibe, I am obsessed. Like, I love it. This is my vibe. The dark, the bangs, I just feel like this right here is my favorite cut. And so far, I'm feeling like the more that it grows out is the more that I'm gonna love it. So that's really the vibe I'm on. Natural, healthy hair and We'll see how long I let it grow before I actually feel like cutting it again. But so far, I am excited to have a little bit of extra length, especially back here. I don't want to make any promises though, because y'all know how I get. I am very much like an in the moment type person. So like if I get bored and if I'm not feeling good about my hair, I'm going to do something about it. And nine times out of 10, it has something to do with scissors. So yeah, no promises, but that is the vibe I'm on with my hair right now. I also got some questions from y'all about my skin. So here's the update. Skin has been doing absolutely amazing. Um, I was struggling with hormonal acne for a while, but I feel like my hormones kind of got a little bit more balanced out, obviously, because I'm not dealing with nearly as much acne. And the little bits of acne that I do get are really small and tiny. They go away really quickly. So really what kind of healed or balanced out my hormones or whatever was working out consistently i did not see results until i was working out consistently four to five times per week for an entire month so if you want to try that make sure you try it for an entire month at minimum before you expect to see any results in your body in your skin um but i will say that's probably the main thing that helps me not only because of like the gym itself but i feel like when i'm working out i drink a lot more water i tend to eat a lot healthier as well so that was definitely a huge help and i will say the other thing that was the other huge help for my skin is my esthetician i want to 100 percent suggest to anyone who's dealing with any any kind of skin issues find an esthetician it will change your life like it will be worth it the money that i pay to go she's expensive okay she's not cheap but it is absolutely beyond worth it my esthetician is lauren she's at bespoke aesthetics here in atlanta i'll make sure to tag as much details as i can in the description box below but yeah she has really been able to help me achieve a really great regimen for my skin and honestly the product suggestions are the best part about having an esthetician because they know the stuff that we don't so that's what i recommend um if any of y'all are like me and have acne spots dark spots whatever get you an esthetician asap i want like a nice fresh lightweight look today but like still flawless so i'm gonna go in and correct some of these leftover dark spots that i still do have my mouth area is also a little dark so i like to kind of color correct with that 
But moving right along, um, every birthday I like to kind of sit and reflect a little bit on where I'm at today and you know like how I can be thankful for like any growth or any accomplishments or whatever within like the last year or so. I really and truly feel myself like genuinely maturing so so freaking much like going to the gym and becoming slightly more health conscious are just like very small tidbits of me that like those are parts of me that did not exist before like gym <laughs> what like i was that girl who could eat whatever she wanted didn't really care i didn't ever need to care but now i'm at that stage where i do need to care so like i'm starting to care <laughs> i'm really proud of myself because i've been so focused like hyper focused on taking care of me first and i love that for me honestly that's been a really hard struggle for me is learning to be more selfish and put myself first let me know if y'all can relate to that in the comments but i'm definitely a people pleaser that's my personality i don't know if that's like a libra thing as well we're kind of just like super overly nice we don't like conflict or anything so you can tend to depending on your personality type you can tend to kind of be a little bit of a people pleaser and i have been that since i was born basically okay i like to please people i like for everybody to just get along and be happy and everybody to just have a good time so that has been something that i've been extremely intentional about unlearning and making sure that i am not just out here people pleasing because there's one thing to be a people pleaser but then it's another thing to be a people pleaser at the expense of your own personal comfort and personal growth you know what i mean and i was i was all that I was doing all of that. Um, so I have to like talk myself through everyday life situations. Like, am I doing too much? Um, am I overextending myself? It's been good. I feel like I have been really, really doing well with evolving and being more selfish in general, okay? It is like when we grow up, we get taught that being selfish is bad you need to be humble and all of that first of all my manager one day sat me down and was like have you ever googled the word humble because i was always when we grew up that's all that we spoke about it was like you gotta be humble that's what you have to do that's how you're a good person good people are humble when you look up the definition humble is not something you should really be in this life it's like it, it and it kind of ties into me being a people pleaser but it's like literally putting yourself last putting yourself on you know what i'm actually gonna google it and tell you the exact definition okay the definition having or showing a modest or low estimate of one's own importance to have a low estimate of your own importance is not something that i am signing on to we're just not doing it anymore so uh humble out the window Selfish is here to stay because I'm putting myself first, okay? Like gone are the days when I am overextending myself and bending over backwards for people who are not gonna do the same for me. You know what I mean? And there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't make me a horrible person. It just makes me somebody who's looking out for me first. And I have noticed that by doing that, by putting myself first, I show up better for everybody in my life because I feel better because I'm putting my needs first. Always like, oh, but does this make me a bad person? Does this make me mean? Does this, am I not gonna be liked? But no, I will be able to show up better for everyone if I show up for myself first. And if I show up better for everyone, that's what's gonna make me a better person. That's what's gonna make me nice to hang around. I also feel like my mindset has changed a little bit on alcohol, which is kind of crazy because uh, growing up in the Caribbean, it's kind of like a cultural thing. Like you drink socially, not that we're alcoholics or anything, but we love to drink socially. There's like, it's just a thing. It's just what you do. You turn up, you have a good time. Growing up, ever since I turned 18, which is the drinking agent came on, uh, I was, in it like i was ready to go i was always the girl who was like let's have shots come on let's get lit trying to get everybody lit um which is cool i'm still that girl like i still love to have fun when i'm ready and have a good time and stuff but i'm just realizing that we can have fun and have a good time without like being like completely wasty pants like we can we can do it without that i mean when you're older of course like hangovers are way worse and it just 
it's even more than just hangovers for me. Like even just having two to three drinks the next day, not necessarily hungover, but I just feel like crap. And I just feel like at this point in my life, there's so much that I have going for me. There's so much that I'm trying to do that I genuinely need to be able to show up for myself and for my work and for y'all every single day. And I can't do that if I'm gonna be drinking all all the time. It's just becoming not worth it to me anymore. Alcohol is just such a societal thing. Like that's what you do when you socialize. You have a drink and another drink and another drink. And uh, no, that's like incorrect. You don't need to. Um, it's not good for you. It's not good for your body. I'm not that goody two shoes girl though. So I know it's, this is not the end all be all like goodbye alcohol, but my mindset has just switched in a way where I'm like, you don't need to go overboard. You don't need to drink every time you meet up with friends and that's okay. Another thing y'all wanted to hear about was mental health and like how I'm doing, how I'm maintaining my mental health. And I feel like that's one of the things like my break up with alcohol a little bit or my mindset shift with alcohol is helping me a little bit. Um, that's another thing of another way of me putting myself forward and not giving two craps about what everybody else wants to think or say. I think that's really annoying about a woman. Like if you're saying that you're not drinking, they immediately are going to assume that you're pregnant or trying to get pregnant or something. But that's like absolutely not the case. So please do not get in the comments right now about pregnancy stuff because that's not happening absolutely anytime soon, if ever. But yeah, my mental health is something that I have really, really, really been prioritizing. Another thing that I have implemented, which has been a challenge for me, it continues to be a challenge for me, actually. I still, like up to yesterday, I was struggling with this. Um, but that is allowing myself to rest, which also sounds very ridiculous to say out loud. But when you are a person, first of all, if you're an entrepreneur, any kind of creative entrepreneur, um, if you just have a type A personality, you, you honestly don't just need to be an entrepreneur to experience this, but if you're just like a workaholic type, it is really, really hard to turn off, especially when you feel like you have a list of goals that are so massive that you just know that genuinely, at any point of any given day, there is always something that you could be doing. There's no such thing for an entrepreneur, for sure. There's no such thing as crossing off a to-do list and boom, that's it, there's nothing left to do. Doesn't exist. And that's something that I'm still struggling with because I'm very much a to-do list type girl. I love being productive. That's when I feel the best about myself is when I've had a super productive day. I'm killing it, I'm doing good. Um, but that can be extremely toxic because when do you allow yourself to rest? I think my biggest struggle with rest is the fact that when I do rest, I am trying to rest, but I feel guilty the entire time. Like, you know how moms have mom guilt? I have work guilt. If I'm resting, I am guilty because I'm like, why are you just laying down on the couch right now? You have so much to do because that to-do list, the never ending to-do list is always there, right here, right here, right, right here actually in the back of my mind. And um, it can be really stressful. And then what happens when you don't rest? You burn out. And what happens when you burn out? You hate yourself. This, At least that's what happens to me. And it's like this vicious, toxic cycle of productivity, work, get it done. That's how you feel good about yourself. And then you try to rest, but you're not really resting because you feel guilty. And then you try to get back to work, but you can't because you haven't rested because you're tired. And then you're completely burnt out, you're depleted. And then you hate yourself because you're still not getting work done and you're still also not resting it's just it's actually very toxic especially saying it out loud right now i'm kind of like wow that's actually not a great way to live so i have been trying so hard to figure out ways to rest without feeling super guilty and the thing that i have learned the thing that george is constantly preaching to me is that if i don't rest if i don't schedule in my rest and make sure you know that's a part of my schedule my body's gonna choose the day that it's gonna rest for me. 
and then that's gonna cause me to be stressed out because then there's gonna be 10 campaigns due and my body is going to be burnt out shut down and telling me no so yeah I am trying 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 my hardest to stop being a toxic manager to myself that's what I am because I'm my own manager and I'm a toxic one so I'm trying to get better at my my management style of myself I have also been trying to schedule in not just only rest, but like time with loved ones. Maintaining friendships at this age is a little bit different. It's a little different. Um, I love it though, because it no longer is like, you know, you see your friends every day, all day, all the time. It's more like, let's hang out next week at X day, X time. I can pencil you in then, you know what I mean? And I, I think that's fine. I think people, you know, at this big age, we have lives, we have a lot more responsibilities, we have a lot going on, and I just, I actually can't stand the people who are so needy and need to be up in your space all the time and get offended when you're like a little bit too busy to hang out all the time, you know? Like, you just gotta know, like, adults are really, like, we be busy. And I don't want to hear anybody talking smack about the way I say adult. I had a whole debate with my best friend about, is it adult or adult? I say adult, adulting. That's how I say it. Most Americanized people say adult. I don't say adult because it's not a U, it's an A, it's adult, okay? Debate it in the comments, what do you say? <laughs> But yeah, we, we really be out here adulting and we don't have time. So I just really have a special place in my heart for the friendships where we'll see each other probably like once or if it's a really good month, twice a month. Um, and you know, it we pick back up. Every time we see each other, we pick back up like no time has passed. We get to catch up and boom, chicka wow wow, that's it. Let's do a little setting spray. There was a time where I would feel a little bit bad, like, I might not hang out with these people enough, but I have a lot, like I have a lot on my plate. I have large goals. I'm an entrepreneur and I'm doing majority of all of this all on my own. And I'm in the process of trying to build a team. As y'all know, I just hired my first employee for the blog. If y'all aren't subscribed to my email list and if y'all aren't keeping up on the blog, you need to do it immediately. Details will be down below. But in case you didn't know, www.alissamarieexcel.com. Uh, someone left the question asking me what is my biggest dream for the upcoming year so if we're talking end of 2022 early 2023 um like i said i have lots of projects lots of things that i'm working on i do have one major project that i am gonna tease because i can't i don't want to really talk about it fully yet um but when it's time for y'all to know y'all will know but just know i'm really working on something super special that is taking up a lot of me i'm learning so so much um but y'all are gonna freaking love it sorry to be annoying i know it's annoying a little annoying tease but yeah i'm excited so you can like low-key be excited as well because it's just ah, it's gonna be amazing i'm gonna put on a little bit of mascara i'm not gonna do lashes today because no so pretty the way this ah, just woke my eyes up. All we got left is lip. I am gonna try this new lip trio set that Shayla did with Dose of Colors. Ooh, I'm excited. It's my signature lip vibe. It comes with lip liner, a liquid lipstick, and this gloss. I had to have it. This is such a pretty brown. Dab a little bit. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this is such a pretty nude. How pretty is this? I will say the gloss is not as shiny as I'm used to. I'm used to my Fenty gloss bombs and my NARS. They usually give a little bit more shine than this, but this is cute. This is cute. Overall, love this lip combo. Now we gotta deal with this hair and also get into my relationship. Lord. I'm gonna take my ring off for a second. Don't want it to get sticky with product um so all i need to do today i don't need my hair to be super perfect or anything um i just need it to be a little bit less frizzy so i'm just gonna go ahead and use the mousse def texture foam which we have decided that this is our new favorite product of all time if you have missed that video you need to go back and watch it yeah so my relationship <laughs> 
A lot of y'all have been asking me a lot of questions on the wedding. What's going on with the wedding? What's happening? When is it? How's wedding planning going? Um, we have completely put wedding planning to a halt, 100%. Um, you guys know I did a bunch of wedding planning right in the beginning. Uh, like right after I got engaged, I was ready to go. I was super excited. Um, but you know, as we went through the process of planning the wedding, we realized that the most important thing to us was being together in the same country. So that is really what we're focused on right now. We wanna be in the same country. I don't wanna plan a wedding with him from another country. I want to be together. I want us to have that full experience of planning the wedding, getting excited, doing tastings together, and not just, you know, half-assing it so we can just hurry up and have a wedding. You know what I mean? So we're taking our time and we're putting our focus towards getting together in the same country. You know what, I like this plan a lot because in trying to start wedding planning is when I realized how expensive weddings are. We are gonna get married in Cayman Islands. That's the one thing we do know. Uh, everybody's there, all our friends and family are there. So it just makes sense for us to get married there instead of having like literally everybody travel. Weddings in Cayman, especially for what we want, they is expensive. Like, expect, like way more than I thought <laughs> that they would be. So by like delaying as well, it gives us more time to sit down and save for the wedding so that that way we're not rushed into anything and you know, we're not gonna feel broke at the end of it. We would have had time to save and you know, make smart financial decisions leading up to it and everything. That's what we are doing now. Wedding is on hold. I will let you guys know that I did find my dress though. So I found a dress, put in an order for it and everything before we even decided that we were gonna put the wedding off for a little bit. So I have a dress. <laughs> I'm just hoping I still love it by the time we are gonna get married. I'm pretty sure I will because it is a beautiful, beautiful dress. Um, I'm excited about it. It was really just, I went to a wedding dress appointment here not expecting to find the dress and then found the dress because my friends weren't even here my mom was there so that was good but i did want to do like the whole thing with like my girls my longtime friends from cayman we'll have them there with me we'll do the whole process and literally from that little like let's just check it out and see what happens type of appointment then turned into me saying yes to the dress and then having to video chat my girls and being like hey will this happen <laughs> If I'm being honest though, I'll probably end up having another dress. Like I'm, I think I'm, I'm definitely getting married in that dress for sure. It's beautiful, but I want to do a dress change. I'm very extra. Like I, my wedding is not gonna be basic. That's for sure. So I, yeah, I want to do a dress change. So I think I will have an opportunity to actually have that experience with my girls just for a different dress. Not like for the I'm marrying him dress, but for like the reception dress. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. So yeah, that's where we're at with wedding. I don't think I've ever shared on any platform before that I have found my dress. And it's because we just, it's just been, a, it's been very unconventional. Um, the way that everything has panned out so far just because we're simply just trying to figure out how to get in the same country. Uh, a lot of y'all oh, were also talking about long distance and asking me, you know, about long distance, how's it going? And some of y'all were even asking for tips as well, which leads me to believe that some of y'all here are also going through it. Let's get into it. I'm a little nervous because I get really emotional about it. It's genuinely the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Um, <sighs> yeah, it's really, really hard. Um, when I say I cry about this on a consistent basis every day, I'm not kidding. I wish I was kidding. I wish that was a joke, but it's not. <laughs> I think that's one of the reasons why like, I struggle with my energy level sometime because so much of my energy goes into 
trying to get through this long distance. I just miss him and I'm really tired of us missing out on so much of our relationship. And if y'all are in long distance relationships too, I know that y'all can relate to this. I feel, and I think this is also another part of why I haven't really been posting too much wedding content or anything because it's just really hard right now. Like when I see other girls posting their content of like freshly being engaged and planning their wedding with their fiance and doing things and I cry. <laughs> I cry and I feel like crying right now. So I'm gonna try my hardest not to because that's not what this is about, okay? It's not about me coming on here and crying, but it is about me being vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, so it's hard. It's really hard um, to go online and see other couples enjoying themselves and enjoying the little things that you take for granted when you are together, but when you're not, like it's like freaking devastating. Like we, there's just, I feel like there's so much that we miss out on as a couple. Whoa! <laughs> this is the reason why I put this topic last because I knew I was gonna cry. I knew I was, but it's hard. It's like, it's it's so, I, I feel like you don't realize how hard it is unless you're actually in it. And like to be engaged in stuff and we know we want to spend the rest of our lives together, but we can't be in the same country is like really hard. Wow. Let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. Let's bring the tears back. <laughs> it's just a a real struggle a real real struggle but the good news is I do have some tips <laughs> I do have a couple things um, that have been working for George and I so we're gonna get into those I'm just gonna take a quick break an emotional break to pull this back a little bit and diffuse my hair tips for long distance these are things that have been working for George and I for sure. So um, one of the things we like to do is still have our date nights, um, date nights. So what we do is we get on FaceTime. Well, we decide from like during the week, like, hey, X day, we wanna do FaceTime. So we both make sure that we don't make any other plans that night, like that night is dedicated to each other to have some quality time virtually and so on that night what we do is we both order food together we typically sometimes the timing isn't gonna align right especially now since um until we have daylight savings time in november came on is an hour behind the us so sometimes the time doesn't really align for us to like actually eat together at this time but typically what we would do is order food at the same time we'd have our food ready to go and then we would watch a movie one thing we love as a couple is watching movies we literally eat together and then we we line up the same movie on netflix and then we just go ready set go and we press play at the same time so we're watching a movie and eating dinner together at the same time so we have like reactions to the movie at the same time we're like oh my god i can't believe that or whatever um so it's basically like having a date night just without all the physical aspects um some date nights we make sure that before we watch a movie we leave a little bit of time for us to just talk we'll just literally talk about anything and everything so yeah we love our date nights quality time is my top love language which i find is what makes long distance so extra hard for me um, but that's kind of our way of satisfying that need we also communicate a lot um communication is the most important part of a long distance relationship and you have to be intentional about it so we know what's going on in each other's lives 100% of the time and that's very very important to me it's so easy to feel uh like actually separated you're obviously already separated by like physically but it's so easy to feel emotionally um distant as well when you're not communicating about what's going on with you how you're feeling what's going on in your days and how everything is going and it can be very very easy to not talk about those things to not share the little things about your day that made you happy or made you pissed off so there's lots of how was your day conversations and while that i know some people can feel like that's like really tedious and stuff it is huge because i feel a part of his days i know what's going on and i'm not going to be surprised 
by anything. Like if he needs to be working late because there's this big project, I know about it already because he told me about it, you know? Another huge thing for us is also making sure that we always have something to look forward to. For us, that is another trip to see each other. I always like to have the next one planned. When the current trip is ending, we're gonna miss each other. Of course, we also have that next one planned. So it's like, I'm gonna miss you, but it's okay. I know when I'm gonna see you again. So I actually recently just went through and bought all of my flight tickets all the way through to January. I'm about to see him once a month. Very happy about it. I'm so thankful to be in a position where I could do that because I'm an entrepreneur. My schedule is really flexible. I can work it the way I can. So I'm typically the one who travels a lot more. Flight prices are expensive though. So I completely get that that's not something that everybody can do, but just anything that you can do to be able to look forward to something together. It could be as simple as one of your virtual date nights. Just something to look forward to is just very, very necessary because you have to be able to hold on to something and just be able to remind yourselves that, yes, it's hard right now, but, we have this to look forward to. You know what I mean? A couple other tips for long distance relationships. I would say definitely make sure that this person is the one. You don't want to put yourself through this stress because it's a lot mentally, physically, emotionally. So you got to make sure that the person that you're doing it with and doing it for is going to be worth it at the end of the day. Don't do it. If there's any kind of doubt in trust, any kind of doubt in your relationship that it will ever work out and to, be, to begin with, do not push yourself through this entire process just to end up getting hurt in the end. And you know what's also helpful? A relationship that has a dynamic, like a, a how do I say it? Like a, just a good dynamic. Like for example, George and I are very like if I'm down, he's strong. And if he's down, I'm strong kind of thing, you know? We actually have this thing like on our worst days, like if I'm having a really, really bad day, he says, okay, babe, let's pause. What are three things that you're grateful for right now? And in the moment it can be annoying because you're angry or you're frustrated or you're upset about something, but he forces me and vice versa if he's having a bad day as well. We just talk about the things that we're grateful for and it just helps every single time to shift the perspective. I am so grateful for so much in my life and this is the one like hard thing and as it, as hard and like consuming it is, it's literally the hardest thing I've ever been through in my life, but I still wanna make sure that I don't let the hardships and the, the sad feelings about it bring me down to this place where I feel like my entire life is sad and I hate my life and you know what I mean? I always, it just really helps to remind me of the light that is still in my life and the excitement that I can still have for my life and gratitude and it's just, it's so, so important to have those moments of gratitude as well. So that is basically how we're getting through this whole thing. It is very hard. Like I said, I cry on a very consistent basis. Um, it, I spend a lot of my energy trying to battle my sadness for it. I, I get sad about it. There's so many things that we want to experience together that we obviously can't. So it can get really easy to say that you wanna put your life on hold and put things on hold in order to be able to experience them together. But if I did that, if we did that, it would we would be crazy. We would go crazy and you just, you, you get to this point where you can't put your lives on hold. You can try to experience things virtually together as much as possible and just keep pushing. Keep living your life keep going out with friends and having a good time and keep doing things that make you happy and that will give you joy even though the one person you wanna do everything with is not here. Um, but you just, you have to find those pockets of peace. And I, we've talked about that as a couple as well. It's like, we are not putting our lives on hold for whenever we're perfectly together now and everything's great you know what i mean so we're still trying to make moves in our lives we have separate goals we have goals together so yeah we're still trying to live life and um support each other along the way while also including each other in everything as much as humanly possible through a phone and that's just how we are getting through things. I know that you guys are clearly, some of you are dealing with the same thing um, and it can be a lonely thing when you feel like everyone else on social media is getting to enjoy their significant other except for you. Pause, let's bring it back again. <laughs> It's just a it's just a process. It's not gonna be your forever and your time is coming. My mom actually put it to me really good one day. She was like, everybody 
goes through a period of life or like a season of life where they have to sacrifice some stuff whether it be in your relationship whether it's as simple as like a fitness journey for example you're sacrificing all the fast food that you love to eat and all of that stuff you're sacrificing stuff in order to reach a healthier happier better lifestyle and it's just so happens that this is the season that we're going through right now and that's okay that's fine you just keep keep going and push through. Ooh, so yeah, that is going to conclude our girl chat, y'all. We got a little deep today. We got a little vulnerable, but I'm really, really excited to connect with y'all on a deeper level. So please meet me in the comments so we can chat some more, especially my girls who are also engaged and in a long distance relationship. I need to hear from y'all. Also, let me know if you guys want to see more like types of videos like this. I really enjoyed filming it. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch y'all in the next one. Bye.